Hello, everybody. You're welcome to the Rene Q Show. I'm Rene Q Boating, and we're taking off from where we left off last week. Very, very, very interesting. Steamy. We're talking about how to get out of a marriage before you get in. And I was speaking to my very, very good friend and sister-in-law, Mrs. Emily Kwaku. I like to call her. I like to add the Mrs. on there to remind her, you know. And it was it was a great conversation we were having last week. If you missed it, just quickly pause this. Go and watch the first episode and then come back. This is part two. Emma, you're welcome. Thank you so much. <laughs> so... Let's see, where do we go from there? So at this point, I was very clear um, that I was not going to be happy long term unless a lot of things changed. At least I, I needed us to have some sort of clearly established conflict resolution mechanism because we definitely didn't. So I went into this counseling session. And I think another thing that was making it clearer for me um, that I was not likely to be happy was the significant influence of the word that was being used to remind me how I should respond, right? So this is somebody who was looking to go into, into maybe one, be, one day being a preacher and would often tell me, but you know, a Proverbs 31 woman is supposed to be like this, so mm. you should be more like this. And I was just like, but I wasn't that Proverbs 31 woman when you met me then, so why do you expect me to be her today? Like, that's just how my mindset was. It's not that I didn't, I don't see that that's necessary, but it's just, I was now being put into a, I, f I felt more like I was being forced into this box. So anyway, I went to this counseling session and was listening to the different exchanges that were coming up from the different couples. And so finally I put my hand up because we were talking about the, the issue of submission, mm -hmm. right? And, you know, the pastor was reiterating how the man is the head of the household and that as a woman, you have to submit to his authority as, you know, right, the Bible way. says. Mm -hmm. So he kept going, kept going. Finally, I was like, all right, you know, hand up. <laughs> I have a question. I need to understand something about this submission thing. How do you submit to somebody? And this is my exact question. How do you submit to somebody whose judgment you don't trust? Mm. And his answer was so simple. And so... Was he there complete. with you? No. So we were doing this separately. It's the same church, but their branch in the country where he was and ah, the okay. my, right, the branch right. where oh, So I he was. wasn't with you at the so time. He wasn't with me okay. for this session. He had been with me on the very first session. Mm -hmm. So we started it together and mm -hmm. then he had to go and I was here. So I asked this question and the answer was so simple, but it was so complete. And it was, it was literally the, the turning point for me. It was a point where I was like, okay, mm -hmm. this is done. I don't need to do this. He answered, he's like, you should never marry somebody whose judgment you don't trust. And that was it for me. And he actually told you that. That's exactly. He looked me dead in the eye and said, why would you marry somebody? You should not marry somebody whose judgment you don't trust. And he turned around and said to the rest of the women in the space, he's like, you know, this issue of submission, it's you have a responsibility to choose the kind of man you are prepared to submit to. Mm. And, and that's when it hit you. That was it for me. Wow. That was... You know, I hadn't heard anything as clearly from all of the advice I was getting. Mm. Right, because- And you're probably getting that, you know, those pieces of advice from mothers, aunties, or because they want their daughter to be married. And let me also be very clear from my uncles who were very concerned that with my strong personality- No man will no marry man you. Will marry me. <laughs> So they were very happy to be packaging Hurry up. Off. Hurry up and go. Ah, and then I'm coming with compa like, Irma, just be quiet. You are Take it auntie. like that, basically. Take it like that. Why are you so special? <laughs> Only you. You can't mm. do what every other woman since mm. time immemorial mm. is doing. But, uh, yeah, and when he answered that for me... So basically, I mean, this is almost sounding to me like you wanted your freedom. And, and I got it that day. Because I didn't even realize that I had tied my own self. So, and let me say it again. He didn't tie me in these knots. I tied myself. Because you were agreeing and going I along. Going along. I wasn't checking my own temperature for happiness. I wasn't checking my own temperature for connection. I wasn't checking my own temperature for longevity. Mm. 
It was just like, it's time. It's I've checked time. the time for the you babies, know, he meets for the, the days. The hurry, list. hurry up. Everybody says he's great. He has a beautiful mm. smile. You laugh. It's, and that's the thing. You, we could talk and laugh and we could spend hours on the phone. But the But then he could be a good friend, but that, not a husband. Right. Mm. The substance of it beyond just surface issues, beyond just the things that you would laugh with any of your other friends about, the things that you need to connect with your husband, mm. your lifetime partner on. And, and I genuinely, I say, and this, this is if I can communicate anything to anybody who's listening to me today, when you do meet somebody and you start to have a conversation about marriage, if you have the ability, try to think of yourself already married to the person and what that means for you. And then start to look through that lens at the relationship and whether or not you can see it lasting as long as you need it to. Because once I had on that lens, it changed everything. Well, Emma, let's take a break. We'll be right back. And we're back. Irma, I mean, I think you really should write a book. You know that. Oh, gosh. You should. <laughs> you should. This, this is a, we have, we're not even done yet. Yeah. And this is the second, you know, this is the second part. And it's so interesting and it's so real and it's so true. And it happens. That's yeah. the thing. It actually happens. So then going, the, the difficult part now was the getting out. How did out you, that's the thing. Before, How did the you, final. yes. Yeah, that was difficult. So having the conversation with him about my decision didn't go well, <laughs> to say the least. Um, yeah, I, I basically called him and I said, you know, I've been struggling with our inability to really communicate, communicate. and for you to take seriously the things that I, I, I bring to you mm -hmm. for us to try to resolve. Mm -hmm. And I just do not think that I am prepared to go through with this marriage. And it won't even work. Yeah, I was like, I'm just, I'm not prepared to. And he's like, why am I overreacting? And I said, this is actually not an overreaction. Mm. This is actually, and I prayed about it. Let me also say that very mm. clearly. After hearing this, I prayed about it. But the peace that settled in me that I hadn't had for perhaps the last year while we've been doing all this mm. planning just was a confirmation for me mm -hmm. that you know what if you know how you can be in a loud space and you don't know it's loud until all the machines stop yeah. and then you realize yeah. how, loud, how it loud it was i had that moment where all the noise stopped and i was like oh, yeah was it that noisy it was that loud mm. um and i was like i don't need to be in a space that's that yeah. loud i need quiet i need peace mm. i need to get back to me I've clearly lost myself yeah. on this road that I've been on. And so time out. And I said to him, I said, you know, it's not about you. It's mm. really not about you. It's nothing you've done. It's me. I did not listen to myself. So it was like you're not compatible. Yeah, it, we, we just definitely were not compatible. And I was like, let's look, look at, let, let me give you the examples of the situations. You know, this is what you expect. Am I wrong in this expectation? He's like, no. And I'm like, but... Am I this person today? And he's like, oh, yes, but you can change. And I was like, That's So that means it. that, yeah, yeah. So he was looking to change you. And, and, it's, mm. and I think it was normal because I was probably looking to change him too. Like I said, I was postponing my happiness for when he changes, mm. for when he adjusts. Mm. For when so in he your mind, you you, so you're telling yourself, it will happen soon. It will happen soon. Right. But and then so you're we not doing happy. The same thing it, to mm. each other. And I was like, yeah, but you see, who I am today, there is no guarantee mm. that I will change. Mm. And if you insist on me changing, I am actually concerned that I might try to change for you, in which case I will not be doing anything for me. Right. And I'm not prepared to give up me. Mm. I was like, you know why? And he was like, I don't understand. I was like, I really like me. Oh, I was like, well, I that really I love. like me. Oh. And I do not want to lose yeah. me. It's the me that you. But then you can only say that when you to. know who you are. Yeah. You can only say that when you know who you are. Yeah. And I was like, you. Wow. How did your How did your person? mother take it? How did your family take it? Oh. Now this was the other battle. Because the both families had met. And as far as my family is concerned, there's no going back now. Mm. 
Yeah. And they also see him as this perfect guy. Oh, he which was really perfect in their he, minds. Exactly. I mean, and, 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 yeah, on yeah. paper, yeah. 100 yeah. percent to this day, I maintain on paper. Mm. Hey, my guy was correct. Correct. Just not for me. Yeah. Just not for me. Um and it took it took at least a year mm -hmm. to get my family to understand me. Mm. my mom my aunts you know because because in our culture it's almost seen as a shame it, that you brought shame to the family you know his family has come and they ask you three times they did should you true, collect true. should we collect yes, should we collect times. you said yes hmm. so then it's almost like you knew it and yet you you know so it's, yeah. a, it's a big deal no it was a, it it was a, a big, big deal big big huge monstrous deal yeah and for me it was even bigger because my mother has always been a champion of mine my mother is my first defender mm -hmm. you know their parents who when somebody comes and tells their, them that your child did this and they'll, they'll beat you my mother will be like is it your child is it your problem yeah. never mind your own problem <laughs> My mother wasn't happy. Like, she will defend you. And then when she comes home, she'll be like, she'll what did you deal do? with you, right, right. So my mother was my champion. And for the first time, she was like, Irma, no. Mm. This is not how you do things. Yeah. You have to see it through. And I was like, yeah, no. Yeah, but that's not you. But I couldn't get across to them that knowing. I mean, I knew into the marrow of my bones that this decision... To not go forward was the right decision. Mm. It was more right than the decision to stay in the relationship. And try and make it work. And see, that's, I think that's, that was what I had to understand. The decision to marry him was not necessarily wrong. Could I have made it work? Sure. Could we have stayed married? Sure. Would I be my best self? No. Would he be his best self? Probably not. So if you're not interested in being your best self, Go on ahead. We would, would we have ch had children by God's grace? Yes. Would they have been strong and healthy? Probably. But the quality of life I saw for myself, the quality of happiness I wanted for myself, the space in which I wanted my children to grow up in. That's not what you saw. Was not what That's I could what you see saw. down the road. Yeah. And so I had to pull the plug and I was literally pulling the handbrake and my entire family and his entire family was pushing this car. And we were on a hill. Hmm. I just want to mean the, 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 the difficulty. The difficulty. Because we his on family a would have to. Hill. Yeah. I was pulling handbrake, and the whole family is pushing this thing. And I'm like, and I was the only person. Nobody stood. Nobody, nobody could understand. Nobody else and could appreciate me now, like holding this car back. Do they understand you now today? today? Yes, thankfully. They do? Thankfully, by the grace of God. So do you think it's a, it's, a, it's a matter of culture? Is there something that you think that should be changed? I think people need to love themselves more. I think we need to love ourselves more. This situation led me back to the Bible verse, which I heard as a child all the time, love your neighbor as you love yourself, love your neighbor as you love yourself. You should be a good person, do unto others as you want others to do unto you. But you see, we always focus on the love your neighbor. We and always not, focus not on the, love the do unto others. Yeah. But the yeah. part where it says, as you love yourself. Yeah. Once I understood that I needed to love myself before I could love You know, th this reminds me of this quote that I so, so love. And it says, Irma, I love your eyes. But I love my eyes more because without my eyes, I cannot see yours. I love that so much. Yeah. And I think that's why, you know, I, I mean, everybody knows that. I am Madame Ambassador of self-love, <laughs> self-confidence. And, you know, some people might see it as, as vanity, unfortunately. Mm. But that's not what it is. Mm. But we can't keep lifting yeah. others yeah. whilst we are putting ourselves down. down. You know, and that's one thing that is so, so, so important. Because yeah. you know what? When you are happy, you can live on your own. But you can live with somebody and be, be so, so unhappy, yeah. be so miserable. Yeah. And there's no such thing. I mean, it, it can be very, very miserable, you know. So that that is just such a, a power. I don't even know what strength, what gave you that strength. It wasn't mine. To, mm. It wasn't my own because I couldn't have held against my entire family and his entire family and 
this man who I I mean, people be calling you names. Yes. And then this man I actually genuinely loved and appreciated. Like, let's be clear about that. Just because I now knew I didn't want to spend the rest of my life, it didn't mean I don't didn't love him anymore. Mm. Didn't mean I didn't think well of him anymore. It just meant that. So I did you was did you miss him? I did. If I'm being honest, I definitely missed our friendship mm. because I def I didn't allow us to have a friendship. So basically, afterwards. what you saw was that we'll be very good friends, yeah. but we shouldn't get married. Yeah. We are not right, we're not, right, we're not right, right. In that way. Mm. And so, yeah. So Emma, look, there are so many people watching now. So many ladies, gentlemen, and there's probably somebody thinking, "Oh my goodness, yeah. I'm about to get married." Or I'm dating this guy. Sometimes it's not even, he hasn't even proposed, but because of the time. So somebody will say, but we've dated for seven years. It's such a long period. Why should I waste the seven years? Let me take it like that. Like I was saying, I've heard it many, many times. They are not happy. But for the fact that we started dating JSS right now, we finished university. Yep. I'm going with him. You know, we see the signs and all of that. But, you know, when I say we, I'm talking about generally those who see it. Not me. I'm married. <laughs> You know, but, but, you know, what would you say to somebody, you know, who's watching and is, is feeling something within them because they're probably knowing that really I shouldn't be going through with this? Yeah. I think find yourself, find your happiness. Ask yourself if you are truly experiencing joy. And that's difficult, especially if you've never been happy. But if you've ever been happy, Try to put yourself back in that space and compare it to where you are. And then think about your future. Project. Do you see it in your future as well? Do you see opportunities for that same happiness to happen in your future? If the answer is yes, go forth and conquer. Cheers and, you know, drink a sip at your wedding for me. But if you don't, think again. Go back to you. Love you. Because, you know, it's said today that you cannot pour from an empty cup. And that's a fact. You cannot be your best, be the best wife. You cannot be the best mother. You cannot be the best employee or employer or any of those things until you are your best self. So get to that point. And if what you're about to do, because when you tie yourself, it is a soul tie. It is a covenant. Once you make that covenant commitment, it is almost impossible in some instances to come out of it. So think about the gravity of it. Don't focus on the family and who will say no and the wedding and the money you've spent or haven't spent, the years you've lost or haven't lost. The years in front of you are significantly more than the years mm -hmm, behind you. Mm -hmm. And if you are planning on bringing in children, please try to focus on what environment will be the best for them. Because it's impossible to leave when you have children and you're in a bad situation. But the vibes will make them less than they could be. So choose yourself. I'm almost getting emotional. <laughs> I'm almost getting emotional. That is... Let's take a break. We'll be right back. And we are back. It's been a great one, I know. I'm, I'm feeling it myself. There's so much you've shared with us. And, and I'm just wondering that, you know, you took a very bold step, like I said. Um, weren't you, were you afraid at a point that you might not meet anybody? Because sometimes that because sometimes that's that's the reason some people will stay. That what if, not that you won't, but what if, and then probably I'll regret it and it's too late to go back at a point. And 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 then how did you meet your mister? I mean, I'm just wondering that then what led to that yeah. and what made you sure at this point that this is the man for me? Yeah. Um, so yes, I was very concerned. It was actually one of the conversations one of my aunts had with me. She called me one day and she wanted to talk to me. Uh, because I'd been insistent for so long. She's like, okay, Irma, it's very clear you've made up your mind. I just want to run this by you quickly. Have you considered the fact that nobody else might ask you to marry them? Mm. Have you considered that? She's like, Do you, are you still getting suitors? Are people still coming and asking about you? And at the time, there weren't any. There weren't. No. I don't know if I was giving off that vibe, but there weren't. I, it was a dry spell. 
Mm. Um, and, and sometimes when you're unhappy, maybe the look on your face, even right? nobody, nobody will even come. Very true. <laughs> and I was very unhappy during that period mm. because I was literally, I felt like an island. I was literally on my own. On your own. In this space. And I was fighting this issue and trying to get people to hear me and they were not trying to hear me. Mm. Um, and, and, and certainly doing something where somebody, for the young man as well, who was saying, Irma, why? Why? Mm. You know, it was difficult. And my aunt asked me that question. She's like, have you thought about the fact that somebody might never ask you to marry them again? Are you okay with that? And I genuinely wow. was. I was what? prepared. Yeah, I, I was. I was prepared at that point. I would rather be single. And happy. Than, and happy. Or f get to my own happiness. Be responsible for my own happiness than to surrender it to somebody else. Mm. And I was clear about that. I mean, crystal. As clear as... Did, that and it didn't, it clear. didn't like you, so you didn't, you were fine. You didn't go to any, you know, baths of depression or anything like that. Not in that period. If anything, what I was ups, un, unhappy about was the resistance, right? I was, con I wasn't even concerned about societal perspectives. I was concerned because for the first time in my life, I didn't have my family support. And the one mm. thing I'd always had was my Especially family. Especially your mother. My mother. Mm. It was, it was the, it was that, yeah. Almost heartbreaking, yeah, isn't it? Yeah, that, that was the mm. most difficult piece for me. Is mm. The disappointment it, she had, you, you know. You really thought she would understand. It took her a while. And when she did, let me tell you, she was my champion again. Mm. But it, it definitely took her a while. Mm -hmm. And you had to explain to her. She, I, I, it wasn't the explanation per se. I think after a while in interacting with the young man, she started to see, see. our differences more significantly. And she was just like, oh, you're right. You're right. Mm. You're right. So parents watching, right. hmm, you know, I yeah. think sometimes we should allow the children getting married to say who they want to get married yeah. to. You know, and to say and to, if they've changed their mind, mm, allow yeah, them to change yeah, their mind, yeah. right? Because that was the difficulty for me at that point. Mm. It was they supported me. It's like you, you agree, and like you said, they asked me three times, and yeah. I agreed. So, so it's almost it was, like you said that now you can't go, go back. back. Yeah, and that's what people need to allow you to be able to go back and say, ah, eh, you know what? You know, mm. even if it's the day of, the day before, mm. allow people to say, I've changed my mind. Mm. So anyway. Then fast forward, well, it was probably four years. Four after, years after. Four years after, I met a friend of mine, somebody I'd known for a long while, um, somebody who was just a friend, really, a casual friend too, not somebody that I, it was like a high, high relationship. We'll see each other, we might f find ourselves at the same function and sit next to each other and talk. Um, we went to a common friend's wedding. And we were sitting across from each other, talking, talking, talking. And I was like, oh, you know, I haven't seen you in forever. When are you also going to have one of these fabulous weddings so you can invite me? And his response to me was, when you agree to marry me. And I was like, ha, 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 ha. Can you see my, my, my smile is like, <laughs> like my, my smile is shaking and here. And I was like, oh, we sort of laughed it off. And oh, that spent, was him? That was him. That was your, your husband now? That was now. your brother. Oh, my goodness. I'm <laughs> blushing. Like... <laughs> So that was... Oh, wow. Just like that. So that was just like pain like that, right? And I was like, ha, 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 ha. So anyway, we just kept laughing and talking at that wedding. And maybe a couple of days later, he called me. He's like, what are you up to? Come over to, you know, my office and let's chat. And I was like, okay, after work, I'll, it's on my way home. So I'll stop by. And I probably went there at about 6 p.m. I didn't leave till about 9. We were just chatting, talking. Oh God beginning of the whatever we talked about everything wow um the next day was probably a friday if i remember correctly he came to where my office was and was close to the beach and so after i finished we went and walked in the chilled beach. in we were on the beach literally till about midnight wow and that was the beginning of the end but then when when you met him were you thinking about those requirements no, I, I genuinely was no longer thinking about marriage no longer I was, I, I was, I almost believed that I had had my experience with it. And so I wasn't interested. I wasn't. Oh, so when you met marriage. him, you, you just thought like, you know, this is just friendship. Yeah, or... yeah we're just dating. We're just enjoying Okay, each other. okay. But <laughs> he moved into my life. 
Mm. He packed bag and baggage and moved in and hasn't. What do you mean by today. that? <laughs> Literally, this and 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 I don't know how to communicate it. I have to say, like in coming to this show, I've been trying to figure out how to explain it. Um, but I promise you, since the time we walked on the beach, we talked every day. We and I am not that person. If I can explain, like I'm not. When I was in high school, so I let me just say he pulled the thing. love out of you. He he made it effortless. He was he became a, an extension of me. That did not feel like it didn't belong. He would come into my 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 mother's house because I was living at home at the time and lay out on her couch. He didn't come in and be like, "Oh, my name is so and so. I want to date you." So, he, so you just loved who he, he was and how real he moved. was. Like he he brought he brought what felt like his full self, and was open to seeing me. So then, what about the proposal? I'm so excited now. <laughs> like, so the, how how did the proposal come? And then and then what led you to say yes? So the proposal was a little un um, unconventional. So everybody who knows your brother knows he's a photographer. And of course, anybody who knows him knows he takes photos everywhere he goes. Mm -hmm. So he had taken a photo the night we were on the beach and he framed a photo, um, put a beautiful, beautiful African print frame on it and brought me the photo of the, the beach scene that, where we were. And he had written, you are my trotro last stop. <laughs> and he brought it to me. He's like, I'm done. This is oh, it this by I'm not going way. <laughs> anywhere else. I mean, that you got feel you. the same way? And I oh. was like... So, engraved in my ring is Trotra Last Stop. Oh. <laughs> it's like a love story. Like, I don't... Oh. And let me tell you the story about the ring. So, again, like I said, we talked about everything. So, I told him about this whole situation and this young man. I mean, I told him all the details, all the things that went wrong. And in getting my ring made, he actually designed it with one of my best friends growing up who had gone into jewelry design. And he sat with her and designed each piece and helped her to choose every single stone that I'm wearing on my hands today. My husband never has to give me another thing. The amount of attention, oh. the amount of everything. He, he let me know that I was so important to him. He may not have had a lot, but whatever he had, he was willing to give to me. And that's all I was asking for. I wanted yeah. somebody who could see me. And when he did, I knew, I felt it. I, you I just knew within I just, you. I had that peace, that knowledge, that we're going to make it through whatever as long as we stick together and we make sure that we let our children know how much we love them and love them the same way we love each other. We're good. It's me and you against the rest of it. My mother didn't have to ask me. She knew. In fact, she was like, will you people hurry up and have some children? Eh, you keep talking about your lives together. When are you going to give me my grandchildren? She was, she was as in, in as I was. My family, my cousins will call him, are you hungry? Do you need something to eat? I'm like, what's going on here? He moved into my life. He became a part of my life. There was no... Our ceremony was for family. It was beautiful. It didn't make a difference it was whether we had that ceremony. Right. You know? Right. So, yeah. I, I, I hope that everybody else who does make a difficult decision has God putting their hand to say, my child, I got you. Yeah. Believe that. Because yeah. God was faithful. Yeah. So, so real. Yeah. So, yeah. So every lady has her boas. Messed boa. up my makeup. <laughs> Messed up my makeup. Has their boas out there. And um, <laughs> trust me, I know this lady very well. I know her husband very well. And they are made for each other. <laughs> yeah. Whew. Wow, so, Emma. I can't really thank you enough. <laughs> thank um, you. No, and I'm sure everybody... And I, I know why I'm saying this. You know, and I'm sure everybody watching is, is, is at this point understanding if they watched you from the first from the first episode yeah. you know from part one they are probably now nodding their heads and saying oh okay i get you mm -hmm. so until you got to that 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 point where you knew within you that 
you know, he's become a part of me, basically. That was when you were sure. So the message really is, you know, just make sure you are sure. Yeah. Be sure that you're sure yeah. before you enter a lifelong, it's lifelong, you know, I mean, this, I mean, it's, it's literally is the rest of your life. And who are you giving the rest of your life to? Yeah. That's the question. We'll be right back. And we are back. Irma, thank you so much. We could go on and on and on and on. I have a little special gift for you. Aww. I'd like you to take it out yourself and just see what's in this thank red you. bag. Ooh, what's in this red, red bag? <gasps> now, that's what it is. It's a, I call it the Rene Q Love Pillow. I, one, I call really? it the... That's it. I love the way it's so mushy and soft. Mm -hmm. And anytime you. you squeeze this pillow, anytime you look at this pillow, I want you to just remember how special you are. Mm. And this is to every woman. I'm, t I'm saying this like to every woman. Anytime you're brushing your teeth and you're looking in the mirror, I want you to be telling yourself beautiful things about yourself, things you love about yourself. So Emma, I'm going to ask you today, tell us, what's the one thing you say you really love and cherish about yourself? Only one. have to do one do you want a physical attribute or do you want a i don't know what what's, what's the one thing that you really love about yourself what would you say you really love about you you know how it's so easy you know me so if i say tell me things you love about me mm -hmm. what do you love about me you you tell me like five or six right now yeah i think i, I, I definitely would <laughs> uh, i think perhaps the thing i really like about myself is that i am open to allowing people to be exactly who they are Mm. I I really int I'm intentional about it in the sense that even when I do meet people that my initial reaction is oh I don't really like them I actually remind myself that there's that they're beautiful still and it's for me to actually give them an opportunity to be that self mm. um, and reminding myself also to always show up as my truest self mm. and that means always exploring what that means mm. and, and introspecting and reflecting on myself and trying to be my best self so yeah wow. that's that would probably be that's my beautiful thing. that's beautiful ladies like i said you always need you know anytime you watch the show when it's getting to the end start asking yourself because one day when i meet you 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 be no i will ask you what is the one thing you love about yourself if you follow me on instagram at rene qgh go in to my dm start sending me dms things you love about yourself i probably will start reading them out what do you think that would be yeah good maybe i'll say um akosia sewa says she likes that this that, that oh, that's a good one hmm. so send me a dm tell me one thing just one please don't don't write a long letter <laughs> just tell me one thing you really love about yourself i might probably start reading them thank you so much for your time i just really really appreciate the fact that you come on this show because this show is a live changing show these are real life stories these are they're not even stories they're experiences that you will learn from so we'll see you next week i wish you all the very best and always god bless mm -hmm.